When designing software solutions, why does it make a difference how diverse your workforce is? We could also ask the same question in relation to digital transformation. Well, to get some answers, let's talk to Ruth Harrison, UK Managing Director for the global technology consultancy and software development company ThoughtWorks. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Ruth, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Good to be here. So let's just answer that question that I asked in the introduction there. Why does it matter in technology how diverse your workforce is? Technology companies need to be diverse and need to be representative of the communities they serve. And if they don't have a balanced workforce, then they're not designing products and services to meet the needs of that community. But isn't tech the great leveller? So it doesn't know if you're black or white or male or female? Well, arguably. But tests actually demonstrate that um, in blind testing that uh, you can actually tell if technology has been designed in a certain way because there is unconscious bias. And on diversity, as we know that there's a skills shortage in technology, is part of the solution to that to maybe draw more people in? Well, it's about attracting them in the first place. A reason to why would you want to go into technology? So technology has to change the face of its external presence, as it would be, um, for people to want to, to feel comfortable in technology. It's had a very um, male-dominated uh, appearance for several decades now. And what are the challenges and why should companies not just do it as a tick box exercise? Well, it's about staff retention as well. The reason people want to remain in your business, who, who want to feel engaged and actually work for that particular organisation and feel proud to do so. So if you're just ticking a box, then quite likely six months down the line that you'll actually find that people have left and uh, that can be quite brand damaging. Are there the people out there though? Have we got to go right back to schools to get people into those subjects? Well, there are people currently who clearly want to work in technology and you don't always have to be a technologist. Uh, there's, there's other aspects of strategic advisory, etc. Um, but schools play an awful lot, a huge part in encouraging a change of mindset um, to encourage young girls to actually even consider going into technology, for example. And you help businesses embrace technology and how much of that is their sort of customer facing aspect and how much is it their internal processes? Well, it's both, um, but certainly in, internally it's hugely important because Good technology is, is derived from people's strategy and technology, and it's a, it's a fusion of all three. And if we just look at te technology in isolation, then the business isn't going to extract the value that it can do. So having a diverse workforce is hugely important, and then it shapes different types of solutions in strategy and, and helps shape and design different types of products. And what's the most important tech transformation that businesses should do? And Do you have an example of something you've maybe helped a client do? We frequently help organisations actually transform from the analogue era into the new digital era, and it's the fourth industrial revolution. So it isn't just about um, small transition, it's really about changing ways of working, breaking down silos, educating executive boards and actually what technology means for their business and the fact that they should be a technology company now and, and view their business with that lens, it's, it's hugely important. We find that long tenured boards um, are less familiar with technology and it's been part of an organisation that's kept the lights on as it would be as opposed to actually being an enabler to future proof their business. So we always encourage organisations to potentially have a, a digital advisory board or a technology Technology advisory board that can help support and, and give good knowledge and good counsel. And if they don't do all this, they go into what you call the death spiral. Yes, <laughs> Tell indeed. me about that. Well, the death spiral, as it describes, organisations who perhaps have come to the digital revolution a little bit too late. It's not too late. You do need to catch up very quickly and try and get ahead. But for those who haven't and are already starting cost-cutting exercises or really don't believe that they need to transform because perhaps they're too big to fail or their organisation is robust, we're actually finding that uh, consumer behaviour and the way that consumers are using digital means they're losing market share. So the death spiral is, is quite dangerous. It's a very dangerous territory to be in. Is it irreversible? Can you get out of that once you've started to spiral downwards? It, it's tough. Um, I would say that uh, as long as you're not too far down in the spiral that uh, you can. And I would urge executive boards now to be looking at the key signals as to what they should be doing um, and recognising if you're losing market share there's a reason for that. It's not just disruptors coming on the outside and overtaking your business. And you already touched on this a little bit but the fact that at board level there really isn't still a, a lot of sort of tech knowledge and that's understandable obviously isn't it if they're not in the tech sector and so how bad is that situation? Well, statistic recently it said only 3% of the uh, top 100 boards actually um, have technology knowledge and experience um, and only 6% of CEOs and that's quite a, a worrying statistic which again, you know, if you don't have that knowledge make sure that you're being well informed and well counselled so uh, digital advisory boards are probably the, the way of the future. And the pace of change is staggering isn't it because you may do a digital transformation you think well I'm sorted now for the next few years and then there's another disruption so what do you tell people? 
Well, we encourage uh, to look at different horizons, which is one thing to move away from the three, five, ten year plan of yesterday as it would be. But it's never changing. It's continuously evolving. And if you reorganise your business to be very customer centric and break down uh, silos within your organisation, then you can constantly be fluid and constantly be responding to opportunities. If you're very rigid, in which we see in mature organisations, this is the struggle. Ruth, thank you very much for that. Thank you. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in digital banking and artificial intelligence. Bye-bye for now.